Hey guys, thanks for joining up soon to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today I'm talking about a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called The Path of the Adventurer. This is a new game by Jugo Rama. It is a one to four player game that takes roughly one to two hours to play. It is a fully cooperative game, so all the players are working together to defeat the game itself. So in the game, each player is going to start off by choosing one or more heroes that they want to play, and each hero is going to be customized by choosing a starting item as well as a starting skill. And when they choose that skill, then they'll choose two cards within that skill set. And there's four different skill sets to choose from, and as you gain experience in the game, you can always branch off into different skill sets or try different things. From there, our players are going to start off in a village, and they're on their quest to discover the location of the Dark Lord. And they're going to do this by exploring all kinds of different dangerous locations, including castles and dungeons, ruins and forests, temples, and mountain passes. In each time that they discover a location, they can choose to encounter it where they're going to fight off bands of gnolls and goblins. And if they're successful, then they'll gain a new legendary item, as well as a new skill. From there, as they continue their exploration, if they encounter the same location again, then they can fight it, and this time they're going to have to face off against an encounter and a random mini-boss. From there, the final time that they run into the same location, they will fight off a random Dark Lord and an encounter. So if they're successful in that, then they have won the game. If at any point during the game they are all defeated, then they have lost the game. So my thoughts on this one, I had a good time with it. I definitely feel like it, they tried to provide a good mix between a big box dungeon crawler and a quick dice chucking game with some exploration thrown in. So with this, they have a really neat little combat system that they do where you're going to be spending attribute tokens to gain dice, and you'll be rolling three different types of dice potentially, trying to look for the different symbols that you'll need to either activate your skills that you're using or doing basic attacks. And then with that, you're also going to have to weigh out whether you want to do basic attacks or if you want to try to activate your skills. With these skills, it is going to fatigue you a little bit more, so it's going to reduce the number of attribute tokens that you'll have for the next round, and there'll be other ways ways to change that as well. So there's a lot of different decisions that you're going to make as a player and as a group as you go into each battle. And each battle will provide you with different ways. You can either enter into it regular or you can assault it and get a free round of combat. But then you're also going to fatigue all of your members as well. So there's a lot of different choices within that that are going to provide you with some replayability. And then the map itself, each of the locations, is going to be randomly generated. So each time you play, you're going to run into different locations and different situations that you're going to have to resolve. Then there's also going to be events and things that you're going to have to handle along the way as well that will change each round of the game. So like I said, there's a lot of replayability within this one, and I would recommend it for anybody that enjoys dungeon crawlers, exploring games, and dice chucking games, and is looking for a good mix in there. But of course, these are just my opinions. I'd love to hear from you guys as well. Let me know what you guys think of this Kickstarter, if this is one you're looking at backing. Why or why not in the comments below? I'd love to start a conversation with you guys. And as always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribing to my channel as it continues to help me to grow and be able to produce these videos for you guys. And if you want to stay up to date on all of my videos, also considering that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new content. So let's head to the table and I'll show you what this one's all about. Let's go ahead and start with the characters. So we have an elf, a half orc, a barbarian, and a battle cleric. From there, let's take a closer look at one particular character, and the dwarf is my favorite, so let's start with him. So he has a number of hit points in the top corner, and then each character has their own special ability that will be activated by rolling the special symbol on, it, on that colored die. Then we have its speed rating, which is going to help with initiative and combat. And then the three different stats, which are strength, intelligence, and dexterity. And each of these stats will have a number of tokens on it that you will be able to spend to activate skills or try to perform attacks with weapons. Finally, at the bottom of the card are the different areas where you're going to be placing these different weapons and items that you have equipped, such as our hammer here. This is going to give a, is a one-handed weapon, and its difficulty is two swords, which means that we'll have to roll at least two swords in order to be successful and hit, and then we'll do two damage with it. And then if we roll the special result, then we'll also stun our enemy that we're targeting. Now, throughout the game, the players are also going to start with skill cards, and each skill card is going to have different effects. It'll have a cost that the player will have to spend in attribute tokens, any requirements that it has, such as specific types of weapons or whatnot, and then its difficulty rating, which means that those are the symbols you need to roll. 
Finally, each of the skills is going to fatigue your characters, and you'll be able to recover a certain number of those each combat round, but it, some of the weapons are, or some of these skills are going to have some pretty steep fatigue, and so you won't be able to recover all of it. So you're going to have to be careful on which ones you choose to use, and throughout the game you'll gain more skills as you do different things. Now, you'll also be able to go to the market and pick up other items such as amulets and health potions, better weapons and armor, all kinds of different things. We have chest armor and different bows, all kinds of stuff. Now, as you go through your adventures, you're also going to pick up legendary items, and there'll be three legendary items of each of the different regions. So, for example, we have the Chaos Armor, or the Chaos Sickle, Chaos Shield, Celestial Ring, Celestial Hammer, Elven Bow, and all kinds of other things. And each time you complete a location, you'll get one of these items randomly. And it'll be based on the location that you go to is the set of items that you'll be pulling from. Moving over to the enemies, there's going to be two base enemies, the Nulls and the Goblins that you'll be facing in most encounters. And then you're also going to have mini-bosses that'll come up after you've completed one location and you choose to go into a second location of the same type. And these will be random, and they, we have the Demoness, the Witch, Assassin, and Dark Elf. Each of them has their own stats, their own speed rating, and special abilities that will grant to them or to other enemies that are in with them, such as this guy here, will add an additional dexterity die to all of the enemies that are with him. Then the game will end when you face one of the Dark Lords, which there are two currently. We have the Spectre and the Winged Demoness, and each one of these, as you can see, are really nasty. They've got a ton of hit points and are going to do some massive damage when they attack. If you're able to defeat the Dark Lord that you've gone up against, then you have won the game. And if at any time all the adventurers have been defeated, then the game is over and you have lost. And you go ahead and give it another try. Throughout the game, you're going to be exploring new locations, trying to find the location where the Dark Lord is. So you'll always start in the village, and then as you move around, you'll be able to visit mountain passes, castles, dungeons, temples, forests, and ruins. Each one of these locations will provide different things. You'll get a legendary item from one of the two images that is shown of your choice, and that is going to be randomized again. And then each location is going to provide its own type of, of obstacles you'll have to face. For example, with the temple, you have three rows, so only three adventurers will be in the first row, and only three enemies will be in the enemy row, and then everything will go in behind that. With the mountain pass, it does not grant you a legendary item, but then you can choose the next location that is revealed. But the mountain pass only has one path through it, so it's going to be one hero versus one enemy and everybody behind them. And each, end, each of the locations will provide different things. Some locations only have two rows. Uh, some locations have all four. So you can choose how you want to approach those different things. Each time you move into a location, you'll be able to encounter the enemies there. And so you'll reveal an encounter card that is going to show you the number of enemies. And then if you defeat them, the number of gold that you're going to receive. And each one of these is going to provide different things as well as you can see different combinations of those enemies now the like i said after the first time that you go to a location so let's say that we go to the temple if we go to the temple again a new temple and it can't be the same temple but if we go to a new temple then we will encounter an encounter card and a mini boss and then if we defeat that the final time we encounter a temple then we will actually go up against an encounter and a main boss or the Dark Lord. And if we're able to defeat him, then we have won the game. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is take you through a sample turn to show you how the game plays. And like I said, it's broken down into four phases. So the first phase is going to be drawing an event. And this won't be done the first turn, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyways to show you how it works. So we'll draw the top event card and we have range. So ranged attacks deal minus one damage in the forest, mountain pass, and ruins. Luckily, neither one of our characters has a ranged attack, so we're okay there. From there, then we're going to move into our travel phase where we're going to choose one of the locations we want to go to. 
So let's go ahead and go to this location here in the dungeon. So our characters are going to move towards that. And then we're going to enter into the battle phase where we're going to choose how we're going to enter the dungeon. We can either do it regular where we're just going to move in and then the enemy will move in and we'll fight going off the initiative. Or we can choose to press our luck and assault the location where we're going to get a free round of combat. But we're also going to be fatigued after that round. So let's just go ahead and enter in regular. So we're going to draw an encounter card to see what we have there. And we have one null and three goblins. So we'll start off by placing the enemies in there. And we'll have two goblins behind them. And then our heroes will move in. So we'll place our barbarian against the null and our dwarf against the archers. From there, then we're going to move into the initiative phase to determine our initiative. Now, the enemy's initiative is static, so we have the null at 2 and the goblin at 1. And then each of our characters will roll, based on their speed, a number of dexterity dice. So our, we'll go ahead and go with our barbarian first. He's going to roll 2, as his speed is 2. And then for each of the reflex, or dodge, or critical symbols we get, it counts as 1. So our guy only rolled 1. So his value is 1, so that means that the null is going to be the first one to go, as his initiative is 2. Then we'll go with the Barbarian, and let's see what our Dwarf gets. He only has a speed of 1, so he's pretty slow, but he got a success anyways, so he's going to go next, and then our Goblins will be last, because any time we tie with an enemy, the characters are always going to go first. So then we'll move into combat, so the null is going to attack our Barbarian, and the Null will roll three attack dice as his strength is three. And he got one success as the critical is always counted as whatever is needed. So that it is a success. And so our Barbarian can choose to spend some of his dexterity dice to try to block this. Or if he had a shield or something, he could use his strength dice as well to hopefully get a shield. He does not, so he's not going to spend anything and he'll just take the damage. So he'll take one damage. And he has 8 health, so he's pretty good from here on. Then we'll continue on. So our Barbarian is next. And so we're going to choose to spend our attribute dice to activate either basic attacks or some of our special abilities. As we have a really cool stun attack here, which we could potentially stun that Null and have him not attack next round. That would be really nice. So the stun attack is going to do 100% damage based on the weapon we're using. And it's going to stun the enemy. And this attack is going to have a cost to it, so it's going to require one intelligence, one dexterity, and one strength. From there, we can choose to spend more if we want to try to have better luck at completing this. So we'll go ahead and throw one more strength at it. And then we need at least one sword and one bow to be successful. So we'll get our dice. We get two strength dice, one intelligence, and one dexterity. And we did not get it. We, uh, we needed a sword. We did not get a sword. So we got the bow we needed, but we did not get the sword. So that is a failed attack. So then we would spend our fatigue. So the attack fatigues us three. So we're going to choose three of these tokens and flip them over. And then we'll continue on. So our warrior is going to go ahead and do a basic attack. He's going to have, use his sword or his axe, and it's going to require two successes. So we'll go ahead and throw two at it. And the dexterity doesn't provide any sword, so we're just going to try that. This is a long shot, but let's see if we can get it. We did. All right. So we do two damage to the null. And then it'll move on to our dwarf's turn. So he's going to go. He has a healing, and he could give another adventurer two attributes, but we're just going to go ahead and do some basic attacks here. So first off, our dwarf will go after the null, so he's going to spend two speed and a intelligence to try, or a two strength and intelligence to try to hit him. He needed two successes, he got them, and he got a critical, which is anything you need. So he's going to make that a special, which will activate his ability, and he will heal one off of our Barbarian. So then he's going to do two damage to the Null. Or we could, the other option we do have, let's go ahead and do that instead. So we'll take this back, and we'll convert this instead to a sword. And then we'll use this critical to make it a special, 
and activate our hammer's ability to stun. So now the Null is stunned, and our Dwarf will do one more attack against the Goblin there. So he's going to spend those two, and he'll spend a blue to see what happens. And he got one critical, so he can convert that over to a sword. Unfortunately, he did not get another one, so his second attack fails. So then we would continue on to the goblins. So they're each going to... The one that's in front of him is going to have to do a melee attack, and their melee isn't that good. So just one, and he misses. And then the other two are going to make ranged attacks. So the first one against the barbarian got two successes. He was He's a dead eye. And then the one against, against the Dwarf got one success. So our guys are taking some damage. So at this point, then the round is going to wrap up. And so we're going to gain up to seven attribute tokens back. So our Dwarf will get all of his back. And then the Barbarian will get his three back. And he can regain two fatigue. So he can choose which ones he wants to gain back. So he'll do those two. And then the last one is left the way it is. And then we would go into another round of combat following the initiative track. From here, let's go ahead and say, for example, that we were able to defeat our enemies. And so at this point, once we are finished with combat, we'll receive a number of gold based on the encounter that we were on. And then we're also going to get a legendary item from the location. So we would choose one of the two options. And each of the options is going to grant us or have three different legendary items. A weapon, a piece of armor, and another item. So these will be randomized. And we'll draw one. So we have the Orc Pendant. So this will let us discard two additional fatigue per round. So that's really nice. That'll let us use some really powerful skills later in the game. And then finally, each character is going to get to pick a new skill card from their set. From there, then our characters will move back to the town and enter into a market phase where they'll be able to spend the gold that they just received to purchase new items from the markets. And then the players will continue with a new round where they're going to draw a new event in that. Well, I hope you guys found this video helpful in deciding whether or not you want to back this game. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by the Kickstarter's main page and drop any questions you have there. I'm sure the creators would love to hear from you and I'm more than happy to answer any questions you have. If you found this video helpful, if you like what I do, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel as it really does make a big difference. helps me to continue to grow and produce these videos. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.